So Ben Affleck was going to make uh, a singular Batman movie. Of course, that didn't happen, but now we have Matt Reeves, the Batman. Finally. It feels like we've been waiting on this for a very, very long time, so uh, let's talk about it. When the Riddler, a sadistic serial killer, begins murdering key political figures in Gotham, the Batman is forced to investigate the city's hidden corruption and question his family's involvement. The movie stars Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, Jeffrey Wright, Colin Farrell, Paul Dano, John Turturro, and Andy Serkis. So let me just say before we get started that, uh, that yeah, I'm going to do a review, but it's going to be non-spoiler, right? It's going to be a non-spoiler review, but at the very end, I am going to talk a little, a little, a little spoilery, you know? So I'll make you well aware of when that's going to happen. So, so yeah, let's, let's, let's keep going. You know, over on the John Campia show, which I know it's, it's another movie review kind of place, but anyway, uh, Erin Cummings said something really, really interesting. She hadn't seen the Batman yet, but she said that when she was in acting class, uh, one of the things that, uh, that her coach would do is she would, they, they would make everyone do, uh, Romeo and Juliet, the first segment of Romeo and Juliet, because if you can't bring something new to the table after so many different iterations has been done, what are we even doing here? I thought that was really interesting. In this case, yes, the Batman is different than any other version of Batman we've ever seen. He's, he's damaged. It's like, if someone actually went through what Bruce Wayne went through as a child, it would, it would really, really mess them up. And it's interesting to finally see a version of the Batman that suffers from that, that damage. I mean, it's just, I have no other way to put it. I guess emo, you could say, um, he's, he, but, but yeah, it's, he's, he's definitely damaged. One of the other things that impressed me is that no iteration of Batman has done this particular thing as well. And it's the idea that fear is a part of his, his thing. It's fear is his ally. And it's just, it's really, really cool to see. And I will say I had a smile on my face. Uh, it's something that I was really looking forward to. And they really pulled that off. And the brutality of this movie, like it's actually kind of shocking that this movie got a PG-13. There are, there are things that happen that make you go, oh, okay, well, wow, that was that was rough. And not just not just things that happen to like a person. I'm talking about subject matter. Like it's it's really like it's it's dark. It's some dark stuff. And uh, while I enjoyed it, there was also this little bit of uneasiness because it's just it's I'll just say it's it's uncomfortable in parts. I've watched and read a couple of reviews, sure, yeah, before I saw the movie, even, because I do that, but one of the things that people kept marveling at was the look of the film, I mean, just the way that everything, the, the set design, the, the lighting, everything is very, very, it's a dark movie, right, it's very, very dark, but I wonder how many people have actually seen other movies, like Seven, because, like, this looks like if you took the Batman, and you put it in the Seven world. That's kind of that's kind of what this movie looks like. That's not a spoiler. That's just that's just the way it is. And I do need to talk really briefly about the Batmobile. The way that this thing moves and the way that it's shot is just it's it's very very cool. I would also suggest you see it as loudly as you can. Um, I know that, you know, you go to a movie theater, you don't really have control over the, the sound, but wow, the sound was hitting me in the chest and it was, it was awesome. So I would, I would highly recommend that experience if you can, if you can manage it. Let's talk actors. I mean, you've got, you know, Paul Dano, John Turturro, great. They're, they're really, really great. And Andy Serkis in particular was like, I on, I honestly wanted more. I wanted more of him playing Alfred. He was kind of like I definitely want to know more of his story because it's you can tell there's more that they're not saying, which is one of those things that's really really good about characterization is when is when you're almost leaning in to to hear more and then when they stop talking you're like, well, "Wait, wait, wait. Keep keep, keep going." Andy Circus has become one of those actors but also directors 
He's just one of those people that knows storytelling so well that I think that's one of those things that he brought to the role that I, I really, really appreciated. Jeffrey Wright as Gordon. He brought this, this different take on Gordon that I really, really appreciated. Um, he definitely looks at the Batman as a partner, which we really hadn't seen on screen. I mean, we've seen this in the comics, uh, and it, probably even in the animated series as well, but there's the, he treats the Batman differently than we've ever seen. And I really, really, I really appreciated that. And I like the fact that there's, there's, there's a, there's a history between them that we haven't seen because this takes place, right? Uh, this is two years into the Batman's career, right? So there's already this history, the, the idea that the, the cops aren't, you know, going after him all the time, like they were in, in the previous iterations of Batman. And there's, there's actually a, a like a respect there, which is kind of cool. Colin Farrell. Um, yeah, he, he looks, he looks like this. He looks like this and he's, I mean, let's be honest. He's, he's a good looking guy and they turn him into this and it's crazy how much of a transformation did it, you know, it's like, if you didn't know that was Colin Farrell, you would never know it. And I just think that that's in a way it's, it's like, well, you know, is that taking away a role from someone else or whatever? And I'm like, no, no, this is him playing a part. And it's, he just, look, I, I have a hard time watching it going, that's Colin Farrell. You can't even see it in, in the eyes, really the way that he, the way that he emotes with this with this makeup and then the voice is so different than anything he's ever done it's it's really really something to watch now zoe kravitz i'll be honest with you i had never really been impressed with zoe kravitz and was kind of leery about her uh her casting i wasn't sure if she could pull off the selena kyle that that i'm i'm used to right or that that i that i like um She's my favorite version of Selena Kyle slash Catwoman ever. She's great in the role, and I think that she pulls off, I mean, everything that you you want Catwoman slash Selena Kyle to be. She's she's awesome. You know, she's she's a good fighter. She's vulnerable. She's sassy. She's all of those things. I I liked it. I really really liked what she brought to it, and. Uh, you know, I, I hope that we get to see more of her uh, in future iterations, you know, I guess in this in this new telling of Batman. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I hope that we get to see more. And that brings us to Robert Pattinson. Now, there's still going to be people that, you know, like many, many actors before who have been in like a high profile movie that um, some people kind of made fun of. This should shut all of their mouths. I don't see anyone having a problem with what he did here. Um, he brings a a quiet power to the role that I really, really enjoy. He's he doesn't speak a lot. In fact, I would say that you know even from the Batman and Bruce Wayne, he's probably I mean he just doesn't have a whole lot of lines. It, it's it's kind of interesting to. To think about, you know, it's like the the power of his performance is in the eyes. It's in the way that he moves. It's the way that he reacts to other people. Um, there are there are whole scenes where he doesn't say a word and he's just reacting and emoting, and it's 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 pretty powerful stuff. And he, I guess I guess that's the weird thing about it, right? It's like we've seen we know the story of. Bruce Wayne, right? We know what happened to him. We've seen it many, many times in different different iterations of the Batman, but he's so sad and like he's full of rage and I just there's something there's it's it's a great performance. It's it's just a great performance and I can't see anybody having a problem with what he did here. The music by Michael Giacchino is is very understated in a lot of ways and but I really really like it it's it's sort of like it it 
it's reminiscent to me of the way that Hans Zimmer did the the Joker theme and even gosh even Bane's theme they're very understated very simple uh phrases I guess musically um but I think he did an amazing job and I I'm really excited to to listen to the score on its own and let it just sort of wash over me it's it's a uh, it's deep, dark, moody stuff. I mean, and that's really the theme of the whole movie. It's deep, dark, and moody. I mean, honestly, everything about the movie, uh, technically, uh, the actors, the story, everything really works for me, except I feel like there's some pacing issues. There's, it's, it's more of an, I don't know if it's an editing problem. I don't know if it's a, there's, there's way too much going on, uh, in, in the movie. Um, I, I don't know. Like, like, for example, Paul Dano as the Riddler, he, he's introduced and then it's sprinkled and then it's, and then you deal with him and then he's, he's not there again. And it's just the way that it's, the way that that whole, whole thing is portrayed is really strange and it makes it feel very like, like start, stop, start. Okay. Start, start. Okay. Stop. Okay. You know, and that feels weird. I can feel that sitting in that chair for three hours. I can feel that that weird push-pull thing going on. You know what it feels like? It almost feels like I binged three episodes of a series. Because it, it feels like there's there's a there's something that happens and then you deal with it. And then there's something that happens and you deal with it. And then you know what I'm saying? And it just feels like it feels very episodic in that way. And I just don't feel like I don't feel like it worked. Right. It's it's it, like I said, it's not that the story is bad. It just feels splintered and kind of woven in this way that there are multiple like multiple climaxes. You know what I'm saying? From from the story. And that just feels strange to me. Many people have said that that they didn't feel the three hours. Right. That they didn't feel like, oh, yeah, this this is a three hour movie that feels like a two hour movie. Um not me. Um, and this is somebody, this is coming from somebody who loves, like loves Batman, loves Gotham City, loves, you know, Gordon, loves all of these characters. You know, I've been, been reading them for 30 something years, right? It, you can feel it. You can, there's, like I said, I don't, I don't know how they could have fixed it without taking out whole characters and whole storylines. Um, it just, it just feels bloated to me. And I don't know if, if, you know, trimming, you know, 10, 15 minutes from the runtime would do it, or if it would always feel that way. I mean, that's just my, that's, that's just how I feel about it. It's hard for me to give this anything below like a three points, like 3.25 out of four, like maybe a 7.5 out of 10, um, simply because I had so much fun with it. There was so much good in it that, even though I felt like it dragged a little, I, I, ca I can't, I can't, <laughs> I, I can't fault it. You know, it's like I had a smile on my face so many times because it was stuff that I'd imagined, you know, reading the comics or whatever. It's, it's, it's really some, some really good stuff. So here we go. It's sp spoiler time. So spoiler time. And, and, and really, honestly, it's, it's, it's there. I've only got really two things that I wanted to discuss that I couldn't discuss fully. And, and that's really, uh, the ending. So, um, yeah, the, the Riddler is in Arkham Asylum and the Joker talks to him and I don't know. I, it's, I guess it's just because there's been so many different iterations of the Joker since Heath Ledger's, uh, Dark Knight that have tried to get that, 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 that singular thing right, and I just don't think they've hit it. Um, none, none of them have hit it uh, the same way that Heath's performance was. I mean, Joaquin Phoenix, it's an interesting take on the character, but it doesn't seem like like truly the Joker to me. It's just it's just not the same. Um, but anyway, we're sitting here and we're watching this and we're going. So is this the next movie? Is this is this what we're doing? Because it felt like I thought Matt Reeves had said that he didn't want to set up a bunch of other things, right? And that, that his his movie was like a singular experience. This almost felt like one of those things that they were like, 
like like somebody at Warner was like, hey, uh, you really need to uh, get some of that Joker action in there, you know? You know, I mean, if we're gonna continue this, you know, you need to set up something. So it felt a little arbitrary and and a little kind of like, eh, I mean, okay. Um, it's hard to be excited though. Like I said, it, we've seen so many different Jokers, and it's like, you know. And the final thing is just one little one little tidbit that I noticed, and it kind of made me go, wait a second, was that? So, very end the, the 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 fight at the end on the on the girders or whatever that is up there, right? And uh, the Batman like injects himself with something. Was that Venom? Like Bane, right? The you you remember the Bane thing? I mean, really, we didn't see Bane do that in in the Dark Knight Rises, but we saw it in you know, the original version of Bane that was in kind of like in Batman and Robin, which is a terrible movie, but you know, the, the, the venom, the, the, the thing that he injects himself with and it makes him all like, like awesome. That's kind of what I thought that was. And I'm like, mm, is that, is that what you're going for there? Is that, is, is that what that is? I'm just curious if anybody else noticed it and if anybody else was thinking the same thing. So the Batman, what did you think of it? Or, I mean, are you like me? You're kind of like, hey, I liked I liked it. I, I thought it was pretty good. Or are you like, oh my God, this is the best movie. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know where everybody uh, everybody's at. I mean, you go on Twitter and it's just people saying, oh, it's the best movie like ever. It's not just the best Batman movie. It's like, it's the best movie ever. And I'm like, you haven't seen enough movies if you think that one's the best movie ever. But I'm curious. I'm curious what everybody's uh, where everybody's at on this. So let me know down below. We'll talk about it. So thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.